Yes, let's talk stocks. So Meta Platforms, um, despite their decision to pay a dividend from a quarter ago, uh, the stock is down 15%, presumably because they or fell 15% after their earnings, presumably because they didn't announce a, a good enough dividend increase. Um, they're, they're now on that um, space. So anyway, they on the face of it, their kind of numbers were, were pretty decent from the first uh, quarter. Revenues were thirty six and a half billion, which was twenty seven percent up, and their operating margin was thirty eight percent, which was up from twenty five percent. And when revenues go up and margins go up, then earnings go up as well. Earnings per share in this case were four dollars seventy one, which was up one hundred and fourteen um, percent. Uh, in general, this was a pretty good report, unless you're a big fan of the metaverse. That thing continues to lose money, and it managed to burn away another uh, $3.8 billion um, in, in Q1. Um, I asked you at the time, Steve, whether if they spun this thing out, you would put it in the capital incinerator uh, pie. But this is this is properly incinerating capital here, right? Um, it's it's kind of interesting to see what uh, what, what comes of that. This is... I, I get the need to invest in stuff um, if you're a big tech company like this, but the metaverse is a really interesting um, money hole to my mind at the moment. But the family of apps did uh, much better. It's uh, They managed to increase their kind of top line revenues by 7.7 uh, billion and their earnings by 6.5 billion. And when things are going like that, investors are much more uh, content to just wear the losses from the, the metaverse. It doesn't feel like so very long ago that we were saying, Metaverse, massive sinkhole, got to cut it, got to stop it, got to shutter it, got to spin it, got to do something uh, with it. And Facebook was trading at 11 times earnings. Um, nowadays, things look much brighter. They're turning around better. They've had their year of efficiency, margins higher, revenues higher, profits higher. Everything looks great. And somehow, uh, their number of users on their platforms is also up by 7%. I kind of thought they might be running out of people in the world uh, sooner or later, which tells you either they have a lot of fake accounts, which is possible, uh, I guess, um, or they are still growing, you know, pretty, pretty impressively here. So with all that in mind, it's not just the metaverse. Um, the question that obviously occurs to the likes of me is, why is this stock down 15% or why did it go down 15% after that report? And the answer is guidance. So Q1 put up some very impressive numbers due to two things. One is higher revenues or rapid revenue growth. And the other is wider margins and putting those together gets you much better earnings. For Q2, um, the company kind of guided the wrong way for the market's perspective on both of those things. So their, their revenues came in uh, or guidance came in at between 36 and a half and 39 uh, billion, which is between 14 and 22 percent growth year over year. And that's slightly lower than what the, the market was hoping for. They were, analysts were expecting 20. So 14 to 22 is it's in that range, but it's maybe midpoint slightly lower than that. They also said they're expecting higher capex as they keep building out their kind of AI uh, stuff. So you're looking at costs to go up um, and you're looking at revenues growth to slow, albeit still still comfortably double digit um, in this. So maybe between 10 and 20. Uh, well, 14 to 22 uh, is what they said. Share price is up uh, 42% uh, in the year. And that sort of small pullback reminds people uh, that if you zoom this back out to be a sort of four-ish month chart year to date, uh, it actually looks like a, a very small um, drop down from where they were. Price earnings ratio is around 24. I, I guess the really interesting question in my view is exactly what will be these uh, AI investments will will turn out to be. If it turns out it's the next family of apps, this company's cheap. It turns out it's the next Reality Labs. This company is probably a bit more expensive uh, than I would like to buy it at here. I can see a genuine case for AI. We've been talking about it earlier on the uh, this show, if you're listening to the long version, but um, I can see that there's genuine importance to AI. I can see it matters to uh, Meta to keep their kind of position here. If it turns into another kind of Reality Labs money hole, um, I am increasingly dubious about Reality Labs and the, uh, the Metaverse. I've never been a big fan of the uh, Metaverse stuff. But at least I didn't like name their company after it or something and get stuck on that idea. Uh, Steve, what did you think of any of this? Uh, just uh, going back to um, the uh, Meta's Reality Lab, Steve, they are about one quarter away from a new milestone. Do you know what that milestone would be? Uh, is it losing 50 billion? It is losing 50 billion, yeah. I think they're 50 at 45 billion. or so, right, at the moment, yeah. 
Yeah, so, and bear in mind, this product was only launched in um, Q4 of 2020. So we've gone from Q4 of 2020 to Q1 of 2024, and we're about a quarter away from from losing the the big 50 billion. Uh, And it's kind of taxing to to look down that, even just last year, and see like there was the 4 billion, 3.75, 3.75, 4.65 billion just just last year, and then 3.85 again now. They're huge losses um, that that might not be recouped for 20, 30 years, uh, the the way that the Reality Labs is is growing. But that aside, Steve, this is a fine report. So we're talking about uh, 3.24 billion on average daily um, active people. That's an increase of about 7%, which you don't, you know, you don't often get ad impressions were up 20% year on year. Average price per ad was up 6% per year. So when you add those three together, they're your triple whammy when you're a, when you're an advertiser. So that, that would only naturally lead to um, pretty large revenue increases, which were about 27% year on year. And then you've got a company that was obviously still in the efficiency sort of phase uh, increases uh, on uh, total cost and expenses was only 6%. So if your revenue is up 27 and your costs are only up 6%, you get a lot more um, money flowing to the uh, flowing to the bottom line. And that's exactly what you see here. So at the moment, uh, just looking at Facebook's balance sheet, they've got $58.12 billion in cash. And um, they're looking at more share repurchases and obviously dividend payments as well. Uh, in the last quarter, they, they repurchased about $14.5 billion dollars worth of shares and paid out 1.27 billion in dividends uh all while still reducing headcount it's also headcount down 10 percent year on year so this is a fine report for for screwing down uh profitability i think you're seeing all of the big guns uh, and i'm including microsoft uh, facebook anybody involved in ai at the moment is paying their levy to nvidia to build up their ai and and server capabilities and uh, and uh, Facebook is going to be no different to that in the uh, in the next quarter. So, um, I there's nothing wrong with this report, Steve. For it to fall fifteen percent in this report, I think is incredibly short sighted. It's not really fallen enough though to be a buying opportunity. I would have read this report and I would have told you this is a mighty fine report. There's nothing to worry about here. And if you was telling me to guess, I would have said Facebook was probably level, maybe up two or three percent on the back of this report. So to see it down fifteen is a is a shock to me. But like you, Steve, I've never been a buyer of Meta. I've never bought it, uh, and I don't think this is the sort of move that's gonna gonna make me buy it have you you have been a buyer of meta then so is this not where you want to be either i have been a buyer i bought meta when it was a much lower earnings multiple than 24 ish or wherever i um had it pegged earlier this week i bought it when it was closer to 13 uh to be honest i sold it much much sooner than i uh, ought to have done here I think I, I sort of take your your buying point as my starting point when I think about how justified this is. I think, do I want to buy it at these prices? No. Um, and that makes a sort of 15% drop to me seem, I mean, there's there's what's justified given where we were before and what's justified kind of full stop. Um, so in terms of do I think the, uh, the number that Facebook is trading or Meta is trading at is now too high? Yeah, I still do. And therefore, I think it was too high before when it was 15% higher. Like you, <clears throat> I didn't see this report as the catalyst to move it down at uh, 15%. I mean, I didn't think it should have got up to where it was before. But um, it's had a strong Q1. To an extent, that's been... We'll come back to this when we talk about Google and Alphabet in a, in a second, but it's done much better than Alphabet has, and it's corrected its way back towards them um, quite significantly as a result from the start of the year. So I think one of the things I guess I keep my eye on for Meta is that they really stand to benefit from a TikTok ban, um, don't they, in the US? They're, uh, they're not an obvious kind of instrument of US soft power, but they are a potential beneficiary of a, a kind of standoff. We've talked Whenever we talk about NVIDIA, we talk about China and US exports and sanctions and uh, restrictions and so on. One of the potential companies, one of the companies that stands to potentially benefit if things um, stay kind of slightly touchy, and they might actually for a little bit, is um, Meta with its social media stuff if TikTok gets um, eliminated here. If you burnt, if it hadn't burnt 50 billion, by the way, they could have probably bought Palantir uh, or something of a similar size. So... 
I guess that's worth thinking about. Would you rather have spent 50 billion on a metaverse, Steve, or would you rather have Palantir at this juncture? I don't think they would be allowed to buy Palantir. I don't no, think that's Meta true. Are gonna, I don't think they're they never going to win a government contract. Yeah, maybe they could buy something else. Maybe they could buy. Um, uh, well, there are other things of a similar size they could buy. Include National Grid. Uh, they could they could buy that, and if they like dividends, they could just use that to pay all their um, uh, dividends. But anyway, um, yeah, decent report from uh, Meta. I thought. You've been watching a segment from the Playing Footsie Show, brought to you in association with our favourite broker, Trading Two One Two. For the full version of the show, check us out on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. And if you check us out on the link in description, there's a free share in it for you with Trading212 if you open a new account. Just use the code FTSE so they know we sent you.